Okay, hello everybody. Welcome back to another planty video. I hope that you are doing so well. We're busting out the microphone again today because I'm a little bit further away from the camera and I want the sound to be okay, so hopefully it will be. I don't use it very often. I don't know why I have something so against using this microphone. Um, I just like, I don't know. I guess I just don't like the look of it. It bothers me. It feels like too professional or something, but sometimes it is necessary. So that's what we're gonna be rolling with today. So, hello monkey. Um, so as you can see, we are doing a repot with me and I honestly feel like I have not sat down in so long and just, you know, had a casual little repot session, chatted to you guys and just, um, just yeah, having a little planty hangout. Yeah, it's been a while, so I'm excited. This is going to be really nice. It is freaking dark outside, so I'm like, I set up as close to the window as I could um, to get as much natural light as possible. But yeah, I know it's not, it's not great, but another tool or um, what's the word, piece of equipment that I have for filming that I hate and don't like using is my ring light. I feel like it makes it look worse most of the time, so puts me in a tough position at this time of year when it can be quite dark out. One of the things I'd actually like to possibly invest in this year is a new lighting setup, but it's just so pricey. Um, but we'll see, maybe in the fall or something because it'll be pretty bright throughout the spring and summer. But anyways, I'm rambling about nothing of interest to 99% of people probably. Um, so why don't I introduce you to the plants that we are going to be repotting? Um, first of all, I'm not repotting this one. I just have it here because it looks nice and I'm obsessed with it right now. So this is my Philodendron El Chogo Red. A lot of you probably know her, but the reason that I'm so excited is because look at that new leaf that we have coming in. It looks like it's going to be pretty darn big. It looks gorgeous. I'm so excited to see it. It's definitely gonna be um, probably the biggest and nicest leaf this plant has given me since it's been recovering from the whole root rot thing. So yeah, I'm really excited to see that. And I just wanted to have her here hanging out with us and I wanted to show you that. So I have four plants that I have chosen to repot today. Um, so the first one is actually my ZZ Raven. This plant has been propagating for, it feels like a year, honestly. I'll have to look back on the footage and find out when I actually cut this up because we did it together in a video as well. Um, it might have actually been a different repot video. It might have been last spring, so maybe almost a year. This was just a stalk that I cut off and um, tried to reroot, and to my surprise, it actually did root up. I put it in perlite, and then I had it rooting in my Ikea Millsbow cabinet for quite a while. And then once I saw roots come in, in the summer, I believe I took it out, and it's been living on my kitchen window ever since, which is over there. If you see that purple light, that's actually a grow light that's specifically on my begonia gray feather because I'm trying to revive that begonia. But I'm starting to think it's not really light and it's more of a temperature issue of why it's doing so poorly, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so yeah, Raven's Easy, I love this plant so much. I find the Raven's Easy just so beautiful and so satisfying to grow. First of all, I love dark foliage. Um, dark foliage and silver foliage are definitely two of my favorite traits in plants. He's kind of dusty. Um, so I love it for that. But what I really like is the contrast of the new growth when it comes in because the new growth comes in like lime green and it just looks so cool when this plant is growing and you have like, you know, a more full pot, <laughs> um, which hopefully one day I will have. I am, my fingers are crossed that this is gonna grow. I'm hoping that getting it into a nice potting mix will maybe help it to get settled and grow for this spring and summer, this growing season, I guess. So yeah, that's my plan for this one. I'm really excited to get it potted up and it is just going to be going into this little terracotta pot. So curious to see what we're going to find when we pull it out of this perlite. Like, is it gonna have grown the rhizomes or whatever? I have no idea, but we will find out. 
Um, yeah, very hardy plant, but it's just, I've just not had great luck with them. And I did, I was propagating another tiny one and then it died off and I threw it away. And then people were commenting and they're like, oh, like don't throw it away. Like it could, but sometimes the leaves die off and the new growth comes. And I was like, oh shoot, like it's literally, it went in the compost. So this is all I have left for Raven's Easy. Okay, and then next we are going to be, oh, let me get him out of this. We are going to be repotting my lovely Anthurium politiflorum, which y'all know I'm obsessed with. This is one of my favorite plants. There's no way I'll get all the leaves on camera because they're just too massive. This newest leaf is two and a half, oops, let's not break the plant now, two and a half feet long. So yeah, he's very massive. Um, easiest anthurium, one of the easiest plants in my collection. And I've really neglected repotting this for quite some time. It's literally still in the cup that it came to me in. It came to me in sphagnum moss and I did um, change that out to a potting mix. So, um, but I just put it back into the same cup. But now today I'm thinking that we're going to be upgrading to this kind of cup, like same shape, just bigger size. I think that this was a takeout container. Um, I'm pretty sure. And it's just kind of like has a hole in the bottom. It's kind of like cracked, which I'm hoping will be okay. I don't know. I just didn't really have a suitable pot for this. And I thought that this would maybe work. So I think that that's what I'm going to be sticking it into. And then it can go back in its spot on my forest setup because I just really like the way that it looks hanging there. Um, it's quite like the, you know, kind of centerpiece in that little area, quite the showstopper. Let's take a little tea break. Yeah, I quit drinking coffee, which I'm very proud of myself for because I didn't think I'd ever be able to do that. But I quit drinking coffee and now I just have like four cups of tea in the morning. So I don't know if that's much better, but I tell myself that it is. It's like I moved from one addiction just to a different one. Um, anyways, this is my new cup as well. Literally obsessed with it. So cute. Okay, so next, this one is a quite an exciting one because this is a new plant to my collection. This is my Aglionema Manila's Pride or, um, what's the other name? Aglionema Commutatum Variegata, I think, or Variegated Aglionema Commutatum. I'm pretty sure that this is just like a um, common type of Aglionema, but the, the obviously like it's variegated, so that makes it more uncommon. That's the newest leaf, which actually has a pretty good chunk of variegation on it. So I'm pretty happy about that because as you can see, a lot of the leaves don't really have variegation on them um, or a lot like, you know, more muted variegation. There's like a lot of different layers here. Like this one has, you know, some different shades of green on it. It's really pretty, um, but I'm really hoping for more of this white variegation. So yeah, I'm just really happy with that new leaf. Um, this is in sphagnum moss and it looks really rooty in there. I got this from North Shore Tropicals. Um, actually three out of four of these plants are from North Shore Tropicals. Um, so yeah, that's where I ordered this from. Anyways, still in sphagnum moss. Looks like there's a lot of roots in there. So I'm really excited to get this into a potting mix. Oh my gosh, is that a new leaf? Oh no, no, no. That's just the sheath. Or wait, <gasps> it looks like it's just a sheath, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's, never mind. I'm really not familiar with Aglionema, so this is going to be a learning experience for me, which I'm excited about. And that one is just going into this terracotta pot. I, I'm hoping, I feel like Aglionema are pretty like flexible. Um, like I think that they're usually pretty easy care plants. So I I'm, I don't think it'll be too fussy on the type of pot that it's put, it's going into. So that's why I just picked this terracotta. I hope that's gonna be big enough. Yeah, it should be. I guess we'll see once we crack into the roots. But the last one that I'm going to be repotting is this little guy here. I'm actually obsessed. This is an anthurium. Um, this is also on the fast track to becoming one of my favorite anthurium because, well, first of all, it's just so hardy. Like I cannot stress to you how tough this anthurium has been. It has gotten so thirsty within the past like few months that its leaves will be like closed. Like they'll like completely 
what's the word, curl. They'll completely curl in and I'm like, oh shoot, like it's not gonna bounce back from this, but then it has every single time. And it's even given me this big, beautiful leaf here, like how gorgeous. So this is also a pendant type anthurium, but instead of the velvety leaves that the Politiflorum has, this is like a really shiny, um, almost kind of like leathery green leaf. I mean, they're both green, obviously. This is a little bit lighter of a green though, um, compared to the Politiflorum. But yeah, wow, just like such a gorgeous um, anthurium. So now I have three different types of like pendant or belt leaf anthuriums. I have, oh, sorry, I didn't say what this was. This is anthurium bakery. So I have, I don't even know if that's how you say it. That's just what I'm going with though. I have this anthurium bakery, anthurium politiflorum. And then I also have two Anthurium vitrifolium, which is very similar to the Politiflorum, but not like velvety like this. So this poor guy has been crammed into this tiny pot for a long time, since the summer, I think. So I'm going to be upgrading him to this four inch just nursery pot. And that is going to be going inside of this uh, like cement planter. And this is so cute. Like, let me show you how cute this is going to look. Like, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? That is gorgeous. And I also think that this guy is going to be making his transition out of the Ikea greenhouse cabinet because there's just not room anymore now that he's getting bigger. So I'm gonna have to find a spot for him. Um, but yeah, really excited about all of these plants. I think we should start with the Raven's Easy because I'm so curious to see what's going on inside of here. So let's do that. Pull my chair up here. So yeah, I guess we'll just chat a little while I do this. Let's get them out. Um, this is all perlite. I think it's pretty dry too, um, which is fine. Probably less messy this way. Oh boy, he's like really in there. I don't want to break all the roots, so try to be gentle. I need like a, um, a butter knife or something. Oh, oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh shoot, my phone's ringing. My phone's ringing. Okay, it was just the vet because Olive's um, prescription refill is ready to be picked up. Okay, oh my goodness. So it did grow like a new rhizome thing it looks like a little potato oh my goodness that's so crazy that that grew back just from like a stem cutting can you see that in there what in the heck that is just wow plants blow my mind every single day like what there's another one over there oh no that's just all big one it's all one big one. Oh my gosh that is just oh there's little baby smaller ones on the back this is just like the craziest thing wow that's so cool the roots look good yeah hopefully this plant has an okay transition to potting mix um i think it will like i said they're very hardy so i'm actually gonna go dump out this perlite because i like to reuse it so it'll be easy if i just dump it off of this mat while it's all on here okay we're good. So this guy is going to be going into this pot, like I said. I've got my potting mix down here. I just made up another batch of my potting mix. I'll put everything that's in it on the screen if you are interested. I'm gonna be changing my potting mix very soon. Um, to something more simple. I'm kind of wanting to go back to basics a little bit. I was talking about this more in my recent Patreon video, but um, yeah, so I'm using up the last of my, all of my like fancy potting mix supplies for this mix. I have almost a, well, like half a bin full though. So I've got a decent amount left. Um, anyways, pop some of that in there. And then, might be able to put a little bit more actually. I'll put a little bit more. Boop. 
so it's like a little bit less than half full. And then put that guy in there and I'm just going to fill it up. So yeah, my month, well, <laughs> the end, if you've been following my vlog channel or like my Instagram or anything, um, I guess mostly my vlog channel, but the end of 2022 was very rough for me because I got quite sick um, and I was unwell for a couple of weeks from that. And I was really bummed about it because I just, I don't know, I put a lot of pressure on myself to, you know, make all these goals and like go into the new year just feeling, you know, it's a time when you just feel really motivated and you want to like plan out your year and everything, which, so maybe this was a good lesson for me that it's okay to have had more of a slow entry into the new year. But yeah, I was really sick for a couple of weeks and um, that kind of went into the first half of January as well and I was falling behind on things and it was kind of stressful. But now I'm feeling really good. Um, I'm really excited for this upcoming year. I feel like 2023 is gonna be a really great year. I'm excited for it. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I may have something exciting happening this year, which I'm literally not gonna talk about. And I know that that's so annoying when people say that um, and they like can't expand on that or give details. But I, I just like literally can't because I have no idea. Like it's very, it's very up in the air right now, um, but something exciting could be happening. So I think that that's fueling part of my like excitement for the year, um, but even if it doesn't, I'm still really looking forward to this year. I wanna try out some new things, really excited uh, to kind of get my plants into better shape. I think that I have just a lot of, a lot of things I wanna work on and with my plants and learn about new things and try new things. So yeah, I'm really excited for the upcoming year. So there's this guy, he's pretty much done. <laughs> That's what he looks like, very cute. I'm hoping, I'm hoping? interesting word. I'm hoping that he will be happier now that he's potted up. I have some Osmo code in here and everything too. So yeah, I'll water these guys at the end, but I'll just set him off to the side for now. Really happy that he's finally potted up though. It was definitely time and I'll probably keep him on the moist side for a little while just to, you know, account for the transition from perlite to um, potting mix literally almost went to take a drink out of this. Also, I think that part of my excitement for this year is just stemming from the time of year that we're in because the next season is spring, which is my all time favorite season. Spring is my favorite, fall is my second favorite. I love fall so much as well, but spring just, ever since I've become a plant person, spring has jumped into the number one spot for my favorite season. Um, okay, I'm gonna do the politiflorum. I'm gonna gently pull him out of the, oh my goodness. Okay, maybe I'll lower you down again. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited for spring. We have had a couple sunny days recently, which is, you know, um, just a sign that <laughs> warmer days are coming and brighter days are coming and longer days are coming. So really grateful and really excited for that gonna squeeze this and then like gently oh the way that the holes are cut into the bottom of this is what I should have done for this one but I tried to put one on the very bottom and then it just cracked I need a like soldering iron I am gonna get one in the future I just I know you have to use them like outside or something and I don't really have a spot to do that where I am I feel like my landlords would just think I was a weirdo if I was sitting out there doing that um but one day I will get one Anyways, yeah, spring's coming. Um, February is typically a kind of hard month for me. It's just like, I don't wanna be negative, but it's definitely my least favorite month of the year. It's just, and it's funny because I have so many loved ones and friends with birthdays in this month, um, which I guess is nice because then it's something like fun to carry us all through the month. 
but it's just like the end of winter and yeah, I just find it to be a bit of a difficult month to get through. So I'm trying to not see it that way and I'm trying to find things to be excited about. And you know, and we typically get more snow in February. So it's another thing that's just like, I don't know. I just find it to be a really hard month. Okay, this guy's really in here and I don't wanna hurt him. I don't know if anyone else feels the same. Um, but yeah. If we can get through February, we can get through anything, right? I don't know where he's stuck. Like it looks, is it up at the top? Like what is going on? I literally don't know where, maybe over here. Oh my gosh, I think it was the top that he's sticking. Okay, it's coming out now. Wow, okay. Okay, guess I can leave that there. He, no. He has been freed. So let's gently break apart some of this. It's kind of hard to do this one because I have to like hold the long part like over the end of the table. So I'm sorry if the visual isn't great on this one. Actually, maybe I can move, let's move the camera like that. That's probably better, hey? Um, so what was I talking about? I don't know, good things coming. Good vibes. Trying to be in a positive mindset lately. Feels really good too. I've gotten back into my plant care routine. I'm finally caught up on all of my watering, which was not something like that was happening at all <laughs> the past couple of months, honestly. Like I felt like I was always behind, but now I'm like caught up doing a little bit of it every day or every second day and just keeping, keeping on top of everyone. Um, so that feels really good and starting to, you know, get into tackling my plant chores. This one dead. I think this root might be dead. I'm just gonna break that off. Whoops. Oh, there it comes. Oh, that's still attached. Let me break it off from here. Um, so yeah, feels really good to be on top. I'm trying to downsize. I have, you guys, I have a lot of plants right now, or I did. I have like, I counted 185 or something, which is way more than I want in this small space. I would like to have it around 100. So I've been trying to downsize and I've gotten rid of like 17 plants. I've either like given away, sold, or just composted if it was just something that was not, like there was like cuttings and things. And yeah, I did get rid of some things. So. Um, I guess I might be closer to like the 160. Well, I did get new plants too though, so, oh my goodness. It's just an endless loop. Like here I am wanting to downsize and everything, but literally my wish list is growing by the day. Like I'm kind of like keeping track of plants that I wanna get on the notes app in my phone. And yeah, I feel like I'm opening it a lot recently and adding to it. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I don't really know how that all fits together. Oh my gosh, there's like, I can't tell if some of these are rotted or not. I'm just kind of going through the roots and checking them. Some of them, like the tips are definitely rotted. So I'm just kind of pulling those off and there is still like sphagnum moss that doesn't really need to be on here. I don't know why so many plants lately have been catching my eye. Maybe it's the spring and more like new plants are like surfacing, but I don't even know if they're new plants. Like I really want that alocasia heterophylla or heterophylla, I don't know. The alocasia dragon's breath. I really want that, never seen it before. Um, I don't know if it's like new or what, but now that's on my radar. Um, yeah, there's just like, a lot of things popping up that are intriguing me. And we're also coming to the time of year where outdoor gardening is approaching us. And I did a container garden last year. I have just like a very small uh, in my entrance area um, where I can grow. I mean, it's actually kind of a decent size, but I can grow things in containers. So I dabbled in that for the first time last year and had so much fun with it. So I'm thinking about doing that again. I just like, I don't know, I've been putting off figuring out, like researching and like figuring out what I need to do because last year was kind of easy, right? I just bought all the potting mix, bought the containers, filled them up, you know, put the plants in. 
but I, I still have like the dead plants from last year in some of them. Um, some of them I like took them out, like my sunflower and stuff, I took that out, but um, some of them, the like herbs or whatever was in there, the plant is still sitting in there. So I guess I need to like pull those out and then like, I think I can reuse the same potting mix, but I don't know, honestly. Um, my knowledge of outdoor gardening is really limited. So I did all my research to figure it out the first year. And now I need to figure out what I need to do to get that going for the second year. Um, so yeah, but I am really excited about it. I loved that last year so much. That was honestly like one of my highlights and it was one of my new year's goals. Um, for 2022 to learn to garden and kind of like, you know, start dabbling in that. And I did that and it was so lovely. I grew potatoes and tomatoes and um, parsley and cilantro and rosemary and basil and sunflowers, dahlia, um, what else? Strawberries, which were lovely. The birds loved those too though. Um, and my lettuce, something just like ate all my lettuce. I was like, okay help yourself and kale oh my goodness so much kale and i love kale um yeah definitely we'll be doing that again my kale's still trying to grow outside right now and my strawberries are actually poking back up again but I don't, but they'll probably die off because it's going to be like freezing temperatures again here okay i think that's pretty good i really can't tell like i think a lot of this is kind of rotted you guys I honestly think I need to like cut off this little bottom section of roots. I just don't think it's healthy. Hmm. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do that. I think they just kind of dried off to be honest with you. Like it's definitely not like wet root rot. It's just, I think that they died off. They dried out and died off. Um, yeah. At least there's still healthy roots on this guy. Hmm. Very interesting, isn't that? Okay, well hopefully that's going to be good. I'm going, is this gonna be okay? Yeah, that should still be okay. Um, okay, so let me fill this up a little bit. Set him down again. Wow, please don't fall off the table. Okay, let's see how that will do him. Oh, that might actually be too much, okay. That's good. Thought that pot was gonna be kind of big, but it's actually probably gonna be pretty good. So, move some of this. That should be, yeah, that should work well. I'm just going to fill, obviously, with potting mix now. Yeah, it's been really cold the past couple of days. Um, Olive and I did a lot of walking and like hiking on the weekend. On Saturday, I did like 24,000 steps or something because I went for my run in the morning. And then after that, I went for a hike with Olive. So yeah, it was crazy. I was a little bit sore after that. I'm definitely not walking that many steps on a daily basis. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we did a lot of walking like a few days ago, but now the past couple days, it's been quite cold. So we're kind of in hibernation mode over here, which is fine. Um, made a nice like coconut kind of ramen soup, which has been really good. Perfect for the weather. Okay, I need to like squish this down. I should have grabbed a chopstick or something is really good for that. Getting all the potting mix down in there. I have a really busy week this week because it's my friend Hillary's birthday. So we're doing a lot to celebrate that. We're going bowling, um, 
going out for dinner and then they're going like out afterwards to a bar but I'm not going to that because I'm a grandma and the dinner is already at like 8 p.m. Um, and what else are we doing? A games night and then I think that we might be doing a hike on Saturday so it's gonna be a full week um, and I've also got like a lot going on at home and just like things I'm catching up on so yeah got a full week for sure okay I think I am actually gonna get the chopstick just makes it so much easier. Mm, there's another plant that I wanted to repot that I totally forgot about, my fern leaf cactus. I recently moved it onto my forest setup. It looks so good. I'd been just like neglecting that plant for so long and it does need to be repotted because jungle cactus can be kind of thirsty. But I think I'm gonna do that one another day. We still have two more to do. What else can I update you guys on or talk to you about? Um, Olive had a dental surgery. I don't remember if I've talked to you guys about this in December. Yeah, Olive had a dental surgery in the middle of December and um, it went really well. She had to get five teeth removed, which seems like a lot to me. But yeah, she had to get five teeth removed um, uh, and four of them are her front teeth. So now she has like a gap tooth look, which I think is like the cutest thing in the world. Like it gives her so much character. It's so freaking cute. Um, but yeah, she had to get four of her front teeth pulled and then one back one. And then another one was like cracked and they sealed that or something. And she also had a biopsy sent off because there was like a growth on her gums. So yeah, that was quite, quite the thing in December, but she healed up really well which I'm so thankful for because I'm always just like, I don't know, so nervous. Like I'm literally a nervous mess whenever she goes for that dental procedure because she has to get that like every year, um, usually just a cleaning. And then if they need any to be pulled, but she was a couple weeks or sorry, a couple years behind because um, yeah, the around like 2020, everything just got kind of thrown off. But so she hadn't had one in a couple years, but now we're gonna have to, you know, get back on track of having it every year. Um, yeah, I guess like small dogs are more prone to having dental issues. She does take two, like, they're not really medications, they're more like natural supplements for her teeth every day. There's like this algae powder she takes and then this like liquid stuff that she gets. Um, so yeah, we are taking her dental health very seriously over here. But yeah, she did really well with that and it's all recovered. I'm just kind of filling it up pretty close to the top. I like to cover as much of the roots near the top as possible. I think that that's pretty good. Wow, I think he is going to be so much happier in this because, I mean, as you can probably tell, he was drying out way too much in that small cup. Um, so now this will, you know, retain moisture for just a little bit longer. And this is still gonna fit in the little thing he was in on the um, forest stand. So that is going to be perfect. Just wanted to give a better idea of what he's looking like in this pot now. There he is, there he is. Very nice. Okay, I'm gonna set him over here. I had this one out because I was debating putting him in a hanging basket and like maybe on my bed or something, but I just think he's doing so well where he is right now that yeah, I ended up going with the other one. I'm gonna take a short break to charge my camera battery. It's also overheating, so we'll let that rest for a little while. And I'm also just going to clean this up. Oh, there was a little crystal in my Anthurium polidiflorum, so I'm just gonna pop that back in too. Okay, BRB. All right, we're back. And I think we're going to move on to the Anglionema. So yeah, we are probably going to have to spend some time removing this moss, holy smokes. It's pretty wet though, so it should come off quite easily actually. Maybe it won't actually take that long. Um, the roots look good though, so I'm very happy about that. Yeah, I'm so curious to know what this plant is going to end up looking like. I hope that it just continues to get more variegated. If anyone has one of these, let me know what your experience has been with them um, or like any care tips honestly, because I haven't really done my research. Uh, but it's doing well so far, so that is very good. I guess I should lower this back down, shouldn't I? Can't even see what I'm doing. Hello? Okay, didn't know if my mic was working. 
I have been doing a lot of reading. I think I read five books in January. One of them was an audiobook, but yeah, five books. So I'm quite happy with that. Is this, I don't know if that's like a root or something weird. Um, just gonna throw the weird pieces out because once again, I'm gonna reuse this sphagnum moss. It, like it looks like there might've been some dead roots, but it's like mostly healthy roots, so I think it's fine. Anyways, yeah, I've been reading um, a lot, actually. I just finished a horror book called Hidden Pictures, and it was like the horror um, winner on Goodreads. So Goodreads every year does like the Goodreads Choice Awards, and they have, you can vote for like all the different genres, and then they pick, you know, winners for each at the end of the year, so for 2022, the horror winner was a book called Hidden Pictures. So I decided to read that one and I just finished it like a couple of days ago and it was pretty good, honestly. Like I would say it's kind of leans more towards thriller vibes. Like it wasn't really scary or anything. Some points were kind of creepy because it does include like drawings. It's about a kid who's like making creepy drawings. Um, it follows the nanny that's babysitting him. Um, but it's not super scary. Like it definitely read and felt more like a thriller and I love thrillers. That's kind of how I got back into reading was through thrillers because I love reading them so much. I love reading them. I love watching like psychological thriller movies. That's just like my jam. But then I started branching into reading different things because when you read too many thrillers back to back, you kind of like, they kind of start to seem too similar because you know, it's kind of, there'll be the same types of tropes or like, yeah, they just can start to seem too similar. So that's why I started reading other books and just fell in love with reading again last year. But yeah, I just finished that one. I rated it four out of five stars. I know a lot of you guys follow me on Goodreads, which is really fun. And on my vlog channel, I talk more about books, but yeah, it wasn't like amazing, but I will say it was a really fun read. The second half of that book, I couldn't put it down. Like it just, I was so sucked in. Um, so even though it wasn't anything like super groundbreaking or crazy, it did hold my attention. And I was just like reading for hours um, at once finishing <laughs> the second half of the book. So yeah, I quite enjoyed it. There's like plastic or something in here. This is really weird. What is that? Probably something that was in the moss. It's really weird. Um, and then before that, I read a really good book called Severance by Ling Ma. And oh my goodness, this book was so good, you guys. It's definitely a slow burn. And I was a little bit bored in like the first, I don't know, quarter or third of the book. It follows a young woman in New York who is one of the only survivors of the apocalypse. And um, it just explores like so many interesting themes and there's so much symbolism in it. It's like a really, it's a book that makes you really think. Um, and it's very like stream of consciousness. So that's why I'm saying it's a slow burn. It kind of goes through like her whole life from when she was younger and um, kind of like the, how she's been shaped into who she is. There's been so much emphasis throughout her life of being just like a cog in the machine and now it's the end of the world and she's still just like doing her mundane daily routines and still like so dedicated to her work that her job that like doesn't even really care about her and just like, I think a lot of people in my age group at least, like if you're a millennial, will be able to relate to a lot of the themes in it. And yeah, it's quite, it's like, the writing is really great and it follows, it's like kind of dual timeline. So it's kind of like a, a now during the apocalypse. And then as she's growing up, kind of like the other timeline is more of like a coming of age kind of thing. But yeah, that was probably a really poor description, but um, yeah, it was a really good book. And it's one that I've still been thinking about since I finished it. So that's how I know that it was really good. I think I rated that 4.5 stars out of five and I just didn't give it a five because I was bored at the beginning. Like at the beginning, I was like, I'm not gonna like this book at all. But then I kept reading and yeah, it was just so good. And now I just started Ninth House, which I think is like a fantasy type book. Um, and I'm not really sure if I'm gonna like it, honestly. I mean, I literally just started it. I'm like 20 pages in, so I can't judge it yet, but wow, look at this guy, he's bald. Um, but yeah, I don't know. As much as I want fantasy to be my vibe, 
I just don't know if it's my favorite. So I'm really curious to see if I'm gonna like this book. And it's kind of long too, so that kind of intimidates me. Like it's a commitment. And I'm also borrowing it from the library, so there's like a time constraint and I have this super busy week. So we'll see how I do with that. But if you've read Ninth House, let me know down below. I know it's a really popular one, so a lot of you probably have. Okay, so this gal is going to be going in here. These roots just look so like, I don't know. They look weird. They look like a spider or something, the way they're like coming out. Really interesting. Just gonna add some potting mix into here. How much do we need? Maybe that much. Oh, this is gonna look so much nicer. Oh shoot. Oh, I'm just like breaking them off. No, no, no. They're kind of stiff, so they just, oh, they just like snap. Oh my gosh. Okay, I like cannot crunch this down any further because all of the roots are gonna snap on me, so let's just fill it up. Um, yeah, I've been growing this plant in my bedroom, trying to give it light from the grow lights. I don't know if that's gonna help promote variegation or not. I think maybe it does for some types of variegation, but I just don't know enough about it to know which types highlight helps and if this is the type that it will help. So I'm just doing it anyways. All right, almost all done. Oh, she looks so cute. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I love her. I love this plant. It's also way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Like these leaves are a pretty decent size, honestly. So gorgeous. So that is that one. I'm gonna set her off to the side. I mentioned in, I think it might've been in one of the chats in the premiere, like when I do the video premieres and there's the live chats, which are very fun. So thank you to everyone who joins those because I love just like hanging out and talking with you guys. But anyways, I think that I mentioned in one of those that I want to do live streams this year. Like I think it'd be fun to just do like a live of like something like this, like repotting or some other plant chore, you know? Um, I've only done one live stream ever and it was a long time ago and it was just an unboxing. And I really like what's holding me back is the technical aspect of it. Like I, I feel like they're so advanced now. Like when I watch other people's lives, I'm like, oh my God, like, you know, there's there, it just looks so profesh, I guess. And yeah, I guess I'll need to get like a webcam or something, or is that what I need to do? I don't even know. See, I need to do my research. Um, so once I like figure out how I can do a live stream, then I will probably do some of those because yeah, that just sounds fun. And it's something that I want to incorporate onto the channel. So anyways, I'm just bringing it up now because I'm just wanting to, I'm just wondering who, like how many of you would be interested in something like that. If that's something you would tune into, let me know and I will figure out how to get that up and going. Okay, this is also, all of these plants are just like stuck in their containers. My fault for letting them get so root bound. Oh my goodness, actually this guy's not too bad, honestly. Like he's rooty for sure. Well, it is pretty bad because he's drying out way too. This is literally bone dry. Wow, this anthurium is so forgiving. Like I cannot emphasize enough how forgiving. I don't even think I'm gonna break that one apart. I think I'm just gonna pop it in here, just like a little cube. Um, let me fill this up with some mix. I find I have to repot my anthurium so often like at any given time, I have anthuriums that need to be repotted because their roots just grow so quickly and they don't like being root bound. Like they'll dry out super fast. At least in my experience, they don't like being root bound. So I could have even gone up to a larger size with this, but this is gonna have to do for now. Um, yeah, this is gonna have to do for now. But yeah, they just, they grow their roots so fast. It's crazy. I don't know if anyone else finds that with theirs too. It's just like, wow, especially when they're in a cabinet. Anyways, I'm just gonna fill this guy up. Make sure I still got my chopstick, that's perfect. Make sure it's all filled in around the sides. Oh, 
Repotting plants is so satisfying, especially when the, it's like an, an upgrade aesthetically, like this is gonna look so nice in this. Um, yeah, that's something that I really want to focus on this year. And I was talking about this um, again on my, in my recent Patreon video, but just like, I really wanna focus on like plant display and like getting my plants into nicer planters or like doing DIY things to make nicer planters, you know? So that's definitely just like the aesthetics of things is going to be a goal of mine this year. Kind of the aesthetics of my home in general. I mean, it's come a long way. Like my place has definitely come a long way. The other day I saw a photo or video of my house when I just moved in and it was like empty. I hadn't decorated or anything yet and it looked so different. So it made me kind of appreciate all the effort that I've put into kind of making this place more homey because it really is just like an empty gray box that without all of like my stuff, you know, on the walls and like making it cozy. It doesn't have much character on its own. Okay, so there's this guy all done. I'll show you the finished result in here. How gorgeous is that? Wow, I love him so much. This is a plant that's kind of hard to show on camera because it's so just kind of all over the place, I guess. But yeah, wow. Definitely an upgrade for him, for sure. All right, I think that's going to be it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed hanging out and repotting these plants. I'm super happy with how they all turned out and how they're looking. And it just feels good to be getting some repotting done. So thank you so much for spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below. I would love to chat with you. Also, if you could give this video a thumbs up, that would really help me out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.